Hi, it's Jackie from the Electrology Institute of Wisconsin. And today's presentation will be on the disinfection procedure for items in electrology clinic that do not need to be sterilized. The Wisconsin Administrative Code 4.013 states that all tools and implements and items that come into contact with a client should be cleaned and disinfected or disposed of after use of each client, and they need to be cleaned and disinfected with a disinfectant in Cosmetology 1.016. Disinfection definition is an application of a disinfectant following a thorough cleaning of the utensil prior to beginning the disinfection procedure. So you need to make sure that you put your PPP, PPE on first, which is your personal protective equipment, gloves, I already did my hand sanitizer. I'm going to put my safety glasses on because we'll be using a liquid uh, disinfectant that could splash into my eyes. I have my smock on and I should be set. I also have long sleeves that are protecting me if anything splashes. So the first thing we're going to do is gather all my items from my cart in my tray that says items to be disinfected. These are items that would melt if they went into a sterilizer. There are items that are critical items and non-critical items. Critical items are things that come into contact with blood and bodily fluids that would pierce the skin. Those are items like the tweezers that would need to go into the sterilizer or our probes. But our probes come pre-sterilized in a sterilized packet, so we don't need to worry about them. But we do need to worry about items like this, which would be goggles if we were working on somebody's face. I have a clip in here when I do somebody's hair, uh, hairline, or I need to get their hair out of the way. And always the most important thing that we're always disinfecting are these little white probe caps. These are not uh, good for putting into the sterilizer. Once in a while, I accidentally, uh, when I'm doing my sonic cleaning, one of these will get stuck in between my tweezers and I run it through the sterilization and it melts inside. So you gotta make sure that you check them and make sure that there aren't any little probe caps stuck inside your tweezers. Little note for you. So what I'm going to do, now again, I have gloves on because all of these items are contaminated from working on a client. We first need to pre-clean these. And so we can do that in one of many ways, but what I normally do is I will put them into my sonic cleaner with my uh, organic uh, solution that I pre-made just like I run it in with my tweezers for the sterilization. And I used my powdered organosol. I made a batch of a half a gallon, mixed according to the manufacturer's uh, directions. I have an entire full uh, one here. Sometimes I give it a little jiggle to make sure all the product isn't settling on the bottom because you can kind of see a little bit of it on the bottom. So I will shake it up a little bit to make sure it's effective and dispersed. And I'm going to pour that into my Sonic Cleaner carefully without getting it everywhere else. Now, some of my items are quite large, so I want to make sure that I fill it up high enough, especially that clip, so that it's completely submerged and everything will get removed from it. Sonic Cleaner is ready. I will take these and rinse them. You could put it in a strainer, or you can just rinse it into your little uh, disinfection bowl. You just want to make sure that you remove any organic material from it prior to putting it in the Sonic Cleaner. They are all rinsed and drained and ready to go. Make sure your Sonic Cleaner is plugged in. Open it up. And now I can take out these 
make sure now they do kind of float so you have to make sure i turned them upside down so that they didn't float i have my clips and my two little probe caps closing it up and you can look inside and see that they're all covered up really nicely close it i'm going to set it for the 480 let it run it'll remove any debris that uh, could be on there organic material like hair, blood, um, skin cells, anything of that nature. Okay, fast forward, Sonic Cleaner is done. I'm going to remove it carefully with my fingers, rinse it once again, make sure everything is removed. I'm going to move my disinfection boat out of the way because I'm going to clean that uh, later with an actual disinfectant uh, just to make sure that it's ready to go and no germs are percolating inside of there. That I will do at the end. Okay, my items are now Sonic Cleaned, which is called Sanitized. Sanitized means all I'm doing is removing any organic debris. They are not disinfected. They are just clean. This is like soap and water. This organic compound is a detergent and it will remove all of the little debris that would be on there, organic debris. It is not a disinfectant. The disinfectant would be the barbicide. This is a concentrate. It's a highly caustic uh, product. You need to be very careful when you use it. I have all of my items ready for disinfection. I have a little barbicide boat here, and what it says on there is barbicide disinfectant disinfecting tray. You open it up, and it's kind of cool because it has a little handle that flips out. You can kind of see how the handle flips out so that you could pick it up and take it out. And then you can fill the inside with water. And it sits on the little, little ledges there. Fold it back in, close it back up, and it drops back down. Kind of a neat little disinfecting boat for a, a clinic room. So now we're going to, um, we have our, our sanitized implements. We need to make our disinfectant. Now, you could make this into a large um, container like I did with the, um, with the Sonic Cleaner, the organic Sonic Cleaner. Um, I choose not to do that and I make a little batch for every time I'm running it because sometimes I don't run one um, every day. So I measured it out and the instructions on the barbicide says that you are supposed to take two ounces of barbicide of the concentrate with 32 ounces of water. That's a lot for what I need to do. So I broke it down and I pre-measured my water in my little disinfectant tray and it came out to be 20 ounces of water. So after I did all the math, I got 20 ounces of water. I already know that where the line is on here. You could measure it if you wanted to. So I'm going to use warm water. This is a two cup, 16 ounce. So I'm going to fill it with the 16 ounces and then add another four and it should come out perfectly to 20, which then, and again, you wanna make sure that the water fills up a little bit up to the top of, of this tray so that if you have a bigger utensil or a clip or goggles, that they're covered once they drop down. And they do if you look at the water line. When I figured out my barbicide, it came out to be two and a half tablespoons or 1.25 ounces. Well, on my cup, two ounces is this line and it's very, very hard to kind of see it and there's nothing underneath. So I decided to calculate it on my phone and I'm going to use the 2.5 tablespoons. So I have a one tablespoon and a five. Now, when you're mixing the barbicide, it's 
safe to make sure again you have your safety goggles on and your gloves you need to carefully pour it do not put the barbicide in first and then the water because then it can splash up on you when you pour the water in so it's always recommended that you put the the water in first and then the disinfectant so i'm going to carefully pour my tablespoons so here's one two and my half put that aside make sure I put the cover on and then I'm just going to carefully rinse this out to make sure that any disinfectant is still on and it goes in its container so now my water has this wonderful blue tinge to it. There is no guessing on this. If it is not measured correctly, it is ineffective. Um, some people go, oh, it's a dark blue color. It's a light blue color. No, it has to be measured precisely to make sure that it is made correctly. You also need to have it in for the correct contact time for the time that it says on the bottle. The time that it says on the bottle for contact time, being fully immersed, completely covered with water, a little part can't be sticking up out of, out of it. Um, sometimes you will see at nail salons where they will have their utensils sticking out like this and the ends are sticking out in the blue liquid. That is incorrect and that is, is not disinfecting everything that's sticking up here. There could be germs all over these but just not on the bottom. So make sure everything is fully submerged and that you mixed it properly. So I did now. So I could do one of two things. I could use my forceps, pick up my items, place them inside. That was my goggles. I have my clip. And now I have my two little probe caps. Again, I do not want to put these in a sterilizer because they're plastic and they will melt at the high temperatures. I will close it down and I will set my timer for 10 minutes. You can have a handheld timer or you could use your phone. So we're going to say that these processed for the correct 10 minutes. Now, if you do less than 10 minutes, again, just like mixing it incorrectly, it's ineffective. So if you do it less than 10 minutes, it's ineffective. Can you go over? Sure. It is recommended that you do minimum of 10 minutes on the, on the manufacturer's bottle. So now that it's mixed, you will open it back up. The time has elapsed. 10 minutes is done. Now they are thoroughly disinfected. The next thing that you want to do is take your little handle, lift it out, and I'm going to rinse it in the water again. And I want to rinse off all of that disinfectant. So let's turn this a little bit here. So I'm making sure to rinse it all off. I'm going to shake it out a little bit. Take a paper towel. And then you can again remove it with a, a tong or a forcep and put your items on here to dry now what I like to do again is with everything I disinfect I like to um, I just put it in I, I get it patted dry as much as I can I'm gonna close that back up and then in my cupboard I have a disinfected items little tray and it usually fits anything that I need you don't need anything big in an electrology place so once I dry all these items and the, the excess moisture is on there I will place them into my items that are disinfected and I will put it up in my cupboard to dry overnight it's in a closed cupboard not this one but it is um, nice and closed everything will dry correctly in the morning I will come in everything will be nice and dry and then I put them into 
the um, into the bins and I will show you that right now if I can take this off hold on a second here all right so I have bins right here where are they and they're all labeled see all the bins there and so I will put them into these I have my little probe caps here it's hard to do this probe caps Let's see if I can turn this around Oop, can't so I put my probe caps in here I have my clips in here and I have one for goggles over here I'm gonna put you back it is imperative that you put everything in a closed drawer uh, that you don't just leave things out because they can get contaminated again so everything that you have that's disinfected you have to treat it as if it's gold and you want to keep it from getting contaminated again so putting it in a closed drawer is what is required by the state so to recap we have disinfected our items before we did that we ha we had to clean the debris off with the sonic cleaner we mixed properly by the manufacturer's recommendations with our disinfectant what do i do now with my pre-made disinfectant boat here by the state law and code the administrative code you are allowed to reuse this during the day until it's contaminated so if there was one little particle that that flew off and say somebody there was a hair or uh, a little piece of skin or something of that nature it contaminates the entire boat and then this would need to be dumped out rinsed and then a new disinfectant batch would be made this needs to be done daily you do not reuse your barbicide day after day after day um, sometimes in salons they will have those big blue barbicide jars with their combs in it and they keep putting things in and out and in and out that is improper you are not supposed to do that um, sometimes there's hair swirling around in it one little hair inside of there makes the entire batch contaminated so you want to make sure that you have a um, fully effective product that's mixed new and is uncontaminated once i'm done with it i will open it up remove that little tray give it a slight little rinse and then i will carefully again with my goggles on because it can splash put this down and then just lightly empty the contents and once again, give it a slight little rinse and put it back together. And now it's ready for the next day. Now again, you could make a batch in a larger container, a half gallon, a gallon, and you could, as long as it had a cover on it, it would still be effective product. If you do that though, you need to make sure that it is labeled. And you have to put the entire manufacturer's label, the entire label that you can print on the Barbicide website. They have it on the website for you just to print it off. You need that for the state boards when you go to state boards also. And so this entire label, you can make it smaller and you can put it onto any container that you want to identify what product is in there. That concludes the disinfection prod procedure for an electrolysis clinic. Thank you for watching. And this is again, Jackie from the Electrology Institute of Wisconsin.